Hello and welcome back. In the previous lectures we learned how to apply textures to the 3D objects in your scene and change some properties of the material component and how to preload and cache the assets for better performance using the A-Frames Asset Management System. In this lecture we are going to talk about the image and the curved image primitives. And as you can see, I've already preloaded the assets, which have their unique HTML IDs, but use the same 1024 by 768 pixel image, so it'll be easier to compare the appearance of the primitives that I'm going to create in our scene. Okay then, and let's start with the image primitive, that you can use in your custom scenes to show an image on a flat plane. So I add the A image primitive, and I refer to the image using the ID in the DOM selector format. Then I attach the position component and I place the image at a 0, 1.5 and minus 3. Well, now we need to adjust its width and height to make sure that the image is not distorted. And you could think of pixels in terms of millimeters, which is correct, Indeed, if I set a width of 1.024 meters and a height of 0.768 meters, I end up with an image that has the correct proportions. And then you could uh, use the scale component to transform the image without being distorted. But what value should you use if you wanted to give the image an exact width of a let's say 3 meters. And what if you later needed to change its size again? Well, the truth is that if you want to use image or curved image primitives in your scenes, you need to do some math, and that's what we are going to do in this lesson. But I'll show you a method that will require you to go through the process just once, and most importantly will enable you to later transform the primitives and scale them to any size with neither image distortion nor force. So what you need to do is convert the image width from pixels to one single meter. Therefore, I set both the width and the height attributes to one meter, that in the case of the image primitive is also a third fold value. And then, to find out the height value, you can apply this math formula that I'm going to add as a comment. So, since 1 meter is made up of uh, 1024 pixels, first you need to find out the measure of a single pixel. Therefore, you need to divide 1 meter by 1024 pixels, and then you multiply the measure of one single pixel by the number of pixels in the image height. I'm going to use the calculator for this, so 1 divided by 1024 multiplied 768 and 0.75 meters is the primitive's height value that you need to set to make sure that the image is not distorted by stretching or shrinking. So if you'd really like to make the number of millimeters match the number of pixels, now you can use the scale component and set both the x and y axis value to 1.024 meters and if you later wanted to give the image an exact width of uh, 3 meters or any other size as you can see this is not going to be a problem let's have a look at our image and then I reload the page well let's now move on to the curved image primitive to which you can apply the same principles and the same method, but the process is slightly different. So first I'll add a comment, and then I add to the scene the A curved image primitive that you can use to create images that bend around the user. So again I refer to the image using the ID in the DOM selector format, And if I move back, you can see the primitive here at its default position. 
By now, from what you have learned in the previous lectures, you should be able to understand that under the hood a curved image is just a double-sided, open-ended cylinder with textures mapped to the inside. You can set its central angle by using the theta length attribute, which has a default value of 270 degrees, and then I also add the default radius value of 2. As you learned in lecture 6 about rotation and the right hand rule, when using positive values, the rotation direction around an axis corresponds to a counterclockwise rotation. So, if I gradually increase the theta length value, you can see how the cylinder bends around the y axis. 90, 180, and 270 degrees. And most importantly, you can see that the curved image primitive starting point is here. You can control this with the theta start attribute that has a default value of 0. So if I set the theta length value to 90 degrees and I wanted to rotate the curved image to place it right in front of us, first I need to set the theta start attribute to 180 degrees. And then I need to subtract from it half the size of the cylinder's theta length, that is 45. So 180 minus 45 will give you the exact theta start value, that is 135 degrees. I'm going to attach the position component to the curved image primitive to move it up 0, 1.5, and 0 and I'll reload the page. Ok, now let's say that you'd like to be able to give the curved image an exact width size, like we did with the image primitive. Well, we need to do some more advanced math to find out the radius value, but fortunately this time we can take advantage of online calculators like this one available at handymath.com. As you can see in the picture, and as some of you may already know, in geometry a circle segment is called arc, that in our case corresponds to the visible part of the cylinder, that is the curved image primitive. And its width is called width of the arc, or chord when referring to a full circle. This circular arc calculator will calculate for all the parts of an arc, given any two values, but first let me set all the sides units in meters and the decimal places values to 3 so we can get precise values for the millimeters as well. Ok, in our case, to find out what value the radius of our curved image should be, I input the value of 1 meter for the width of arc, because this is the default value that we need for our curved image width, and a value of 90 degrees for the angle subtended by the arc, because this is the central angle that we set for the theta length. And when I click calculate, I get all the results color coded and including both the entered values and calculated values. So you know that the radius value has to be 0 0.707 meters. I'm going back to left preview and I set the radius value to 0 0.707 and now it's time to give the curved image the right proportions. We need to find out its height value so that the image is not distorted. And to do so, we can still use the formula that we used for the image primitive, to which we need to make some minor adjustments though. I'm going back to the results from the online calculator, and as you can see, since our curved image corresponds to the arc, instead of the 1 meter width in the math formula, we need to use the value that we got for the length of arc. I'm also adding another comment to paste this information.
and I go back to Live Preview. Then I'm going to use the calculator again to find out the height value using the math formula. So 1.111 meters divided by 1024 pixels multiplied by 768 pixels gives us a height value of 0 0.833 meters. I can now add the height HTML attribute and its value. And if I move around the scene, you can see that the image is not distorted. Finally, we are ready to take advantage of the scale component again to transform the curved image width while preserving the correct image proportions. And if I change the default values of the X, Y and Z axis, because we need to take into account the values as well, to 3 meters, the image will scale up as expected. And to double check the outcome, I'm going to add a box primitive to our scene as a reference. So, a box primitive, color red, opacity 0 0.5, width 3, height 0 0.1, depth 3, position 0, 1.5, and minus 1.5 which confirms that the default width of arc value of our curved image primitive is exactly 1 meter. And this is what will enable you to easily transform the primitive, scaling its size up or down to any new size that you may need. I'll comment the whole box primitive, as we don't need it anymore for the moment, and reload the page. Now, what makes curved images peculiar is that they are pleasing for legibility since each pixel sits at the same distance from the user. And for this reason they can be a better choice than angled flat planes for complex layouts. So let's build a 3 image layout. I'll go back to the online calculator to show you this illustration. And the layout will result in a circular segment arranged around the camera with a central angle of 180 degrees and each image will have a central angle of 50 degrees. I'll start by creating a copy of our curved image primitive And then I update the angle subtended by the arc value to 180. And for the sake of clarity, I also add a comment for the central angle of each image. And in this picture, you can see that to ensure that later we will be able to scale the layout width to any required value, we still need to establish a default value of 1 meter for the width of the arc that in this case corresponds to the cylinder's diameter so I update its comment as well and therefore we can easily calculate its radius that is going to be 0 0.5 meters now I go back to our live preview then I set the radius value of the first image to 0 0.5 and the theta length to 50 degrees. I set the theta start to 90 degrees. And I refer to its image using the ID in the DOM selector format. 
So this is going to be the image on our right and I'll add the comment for this. And if we look at the image, we now need to set a correct height value. And to do so, we need to calculate the length of arc of this curved image. So back to the online calculator. We can add a new row. And we now need to input the radius of arc value, 0 0.5, and the angle subtended by the arc of the curved image, so 50. I copy and paste the calculated result of 0 0.436 meters, and I go back to left preview. We are now ready to find out the curved image height value. So 0 0.436 meters divided by 1024 pixels multiplied 768 pixels. And when I set the new height value of 0 0.327 the image looks great and is not distorted anymore. And now all we need to do is create two copies of it and rotate them along the arc. So I reload the page and I start with the image that we want to be right in front of us. So I update its comment and refer to its image then I set the theta star to 180 degrees, minus half the value of its theta length, that is 25, so 155 degrees. And then I move on to the image that we want to be on our left. Move around so you can see better. So I create a copy from the center image. And again, first I update its comment, refer to its image, and then I set the theta start to 270 degrees, minus the whole value of its theta length this time, that is 50, so 220 degrees. And now I'll reload the page to see how it looks like. Well, it looks great. Finally, I'm going to uncomment the box so we can compare the width of all the 3D objects in our scene. And as you can see, they all have the same exact width of 3 meters. So this is how you can use the image and the curved image primitives in your custom scenes using some math and a practical method that will enable you to easily transform them later without being distorted and with no efforts. And I'll see you in the next lecture.